Welcome World Cup fans to another festival of winter football. If you aren't already familiar with the groups by now, here's your final chance. And just to be sure you don't miss a moment of World Cup history being made, subscribe and ring the bell to ensure you're never late. Match number one of 64 fixtures to feature in the last 32 team World Cup taking place in the business end of 2022. We all know why we are here in Qatar, but the most important thing is that you are here and you've waited years for, to be precise, for another World Cup tournament to take place before your very eyes. The hosts are underdogs on the world stage. Three years ago in Abu Dhabi, they slaughtered Japan to be crowned Asian champions for the first time. The World Cup 2022 is underway and Qatar raise the curtain against the South Americans, Ecuador. Galindez called into action to thump away. The Alarila match ball for the first time. And a wild Alan Franco emerges on the Qatar penalty area, striking the ball against the post. First major breakthrough of the first World Cup match. Al Haydos muttering to himself, thanks for the through pass from Preciado. And Qatar have done it in 13 minutes. Al Moyes Ali. Floating like a butterfly, scoring the first goal in Qatar World Cup history. No thanks in part to Ayrton Preciado with an unfortunate assist to Al Haydos. All he had to do was show up to the Ecuadorian residence and tap on the front door, and Qatar's World Cup is underway. Well, Plata's half volley screeches wide, one of the standouts from the last Cup of America. Christian Pinyan doesn't have the guts to volley. Well, Franco again wells one wide for Ecuador. Alhados buying his time. He's joined by Hartem. He's pulled wide with a slight daisy cutter. Videla Martinez finding Ana Valencia in the area. What a save from Shaib Al Shaid. Violent power from Valencia. Took some doing to avert a goal. This possessed is Al Haydos. Cuts inside. And Al Haydos a deflection. Brave interception from the skull of Hincarpie. Very generous of the hosts to give the ball away to Ecuador. Well, Valencia has pounced. And this time, Syed Al Shahib couldn't deflect it to safety. And Valencia, the Ecuadorian captain, has sprung a reply for the visitors. Not entirely fair on the goalkeeper to criticize. I think the entire Qatari backline. Caught by surprise of the immediate regret of Abdel Karim Hassan. Afif has an option that's cleared away. No nonsense. Afif Aladin. Not a bad effort. Qatar's left winger Ahmed Aladin, one to watch out for in this tournament. Ali brazenly interrupted by Franco. Valencia. Oh, it's a turnaround! Ecuador are in front 
in the World Cup opener for the first time since 2014. Although they have never won a World Cup opener since 2006 against Poland in Germany. And Enna Valencia wasn't even there. He would have only been 20 years old at the time. Aladdin, what a humiliating miss. Surely should be hitting the target a certainty. Should be scoring from that proximity. Guitar may be in trouble. Enna Valencia has made its double. It's two goals for the Ecuadorian captain. The Qatari party was fun while it lasted. South America once again demonstrating why they always statistically finish higher than the Asian teams in the World Cup. Can Ahmed Aladin provide a breakthrough? No, it's been clawed away with a fisted interception from Galindez. Enna Valencia slamming on the brakes to throw in a cross to Crezo. It amounts to nothing. And Salman plays it up the line to Madiba. Ahmed Aladin. Finds Ali, the goal scorer for Qatar. Wow, he's wound in the second. Only two goal scorers on the World Cup 2022 record. Enna Valencia and Alamoyes Ali. The only two goal scorers in World Cup 2022 history. A cross from Enna Valencia, shut out by Al Shaib, results in the counter attack of death. And it's Alamoyans Ali who punctuates the end of the sentence. Hassan, cornered by Samiento, has found Aladin and Asadala! Has found. Qatar's first World Cup equaliser. It comes as the hosts seemingly throw away a World Cup lead against Ecuador. A two goal deficit unwound by your wealthy caretakers. Well, Ali had eyes for this volley. Shadala couldn't keep up and then the full time whistle brings an end. To a six goal thriller of a World Cup opener, Qatar 3, Ecuador 3. The Senegalese and Dutch World Cup opener was postponed in order for the hosts to welcome us to their tournament. Well, they've done so with a point. Nonetheless, it's better late than never in the Netherlands case. It is their first appearance in eight years since the Brazilian tournament of 2014 of which the Dutch finished third. Well, De Jong had an idea to open the scoring in spectacular fashion. It backfired wildly. Dumfries to Klassen gets the wrong side of the goal net. Half the stadium in Doha thought this was a goal. Dia shielding away Darun. Idrissa Gay has his strike saved. Luke de Jong, Luke King for Depay. Good prowess shown from Mundi. De Jong out wide to Dumfries is crossed in. Depay at the near post going for an impersonation of Mario Goethe's World Cup winning goal from 2014, but Dutch's last appearance in the World Cup Finals. Saar is surely for on goal, and Sillison has other plans. Cut him in half like a paper man. Luke de Jong isolated in the final third of Senegal's world. Well, Dali Blind with a cross in impromptu to Luke de Jong in the Memphis Depay. Emerges on the end of it. It's the first goal for the Netherlands. It's taken three minutes into the second half after an unremarkable start. 
Not a bad follow on from the Barcelona striker. It's Blind with a cross in, knocked in by De Jong. And just tucked away by Memphis Depay. One of the breakthrough talents of the Dutch's last World Cup appearance in 2014. Sadio Mane. Oh, and he's threaded it through to Dia. A far from slow reply from Senegal. Burele Dia will be grateful for the presence of World Cup doubt Sadio Mane. Sillison blinked and from Senegal it's in. Depay retorting back to Dumfries. Dangerous cross in, Klaassen has his one and only chance cut out. Graven Birch. Big horse. Back to Graven Birch. Spilled aside. One goal apiece, one point a team. Senegal won, Netherlands won. Since the Euro 2020 final, England has been a critical climate for Gareth Southgate. He has three chances to prove the world wrong with his three Lions. Well, in the third largest municipality of Qatar, they take on the continent's own Iran. In the first game of arguably the most geopolitically charged group, of the 2022 World Cup. Jude Bellingham receives possession from Stones Kane. Oh, he's bumped it through! England are in front. It's taken them just over three minutes. What a head start Gareth Southgate gets on the English media. The very first chance of the game, Harry Kane came with his 52nd goal of his international fame. Kieran Trippier to Sterling. Was watching Jude Bellingham. Kane has it tipped over by Baron Vaughan. Agile response from the Iranian keeper. Fair play to him. What a save. Ali Reza Berendvand, one of the most experienced goalkeepers in the World Cup, one of the most experienced Iranians in the tournament on the pitch. And now the tide has turned against the Iranians almost immediately from his goal kick is Ken Trippier with a bending cross in. Kane! It's a brace for the big red machine, Kane! From the third chance on goal from England. Who could announce a more perfect start than the England skipper, Harry Kane? Then a brace against Iran in Al Rayyan. Rezaan out wide. It's pinged in. The goal is there. And Pickford has his first workout of the day. Taken quickly by Godos. And the shot is deflected awkwardly. Goris Oder to Yakim Basish. Brought down by Kane to Sterling. One of Southgate's favourite forwards. And Trippier ignores him. Ops for Kane. And it's a gift. It is a gift, ladies and gentlemen. A hat trick in less than 20 minutes to Harry Kane. The top goal scorer at the last World Cup with six goals. Harry Kane is already halfway there in his first game. England keep on coming and this time it's Trippier. Trying to get as much space as he can on the flank. And Kane looking for number four. Nodded just wide of the upright. Marek Cheremi of Porto. The goal is there. Sends in a cross that's missed by Maguire. And Alireza, Yohan Bashish. 
has made the misery of Maguire's attempts at middling in and a ring in goal. And Jordan Pickford didn't have the heart to get a brown stain on that yellow shirt. Sure, Foden, Kane, his first touch gives him a head start and colours are there. And it's the unloving side of the side netting for Harry Kane. Goal is there. Yahan Bashish to Remy. Swatted away by Pickford. Mohammadi is rolled by Stones. Now Kane has planted it through to make some mounts. Tiami Abraham must emerge. And he's found the wrong side of the goal, just like Harry Kane did when he was seeking his fourth. Jeremy survives against Stones and Mounts, and he's found Asmoon. Sada Asmoon of Leverkusen has set us up for a dramatic final three minutes in England's opening game. Are they going to throw it away? A defence that's bamboozled once again out of nothing. Sada Asmoon with a finish smoother than Michael Jackson walking on the moon. England 3, Iran 2, a hat trick for Kane in World Cup group number 2. In theory, every day history should be made in the World Cup. Wales are doing so returning to the tournament for the third time in 64 years. They take on the hosts of the very next tournament, the USA, who are back themselves after an eight year absence from the World Cup Finals. Dest decides on the wide side of Pulisic and Timothy Weir couldn't bring it down in time. Weir sniffs an opening for Pulisic. Hits it hard and wide. And Gareth Bale matched in the air by Robinson. Now Neko Williams will back him up. Gareth Bale slams on the brakes. Sends in the cross to Kiefer Moore. Loops the header over the USA goal. Norris. Robinson butts head with Neko Williams. Robinson emerges. Crossing opportunity. It's way at the close. Hits the post. Corner kick to Wales. First chance of the second half. More. Leaves us all wanting more. Zimmerman of Norwich versus James of Fulham. And it's Aaron Ramsey who rockets it wide. Timothy Weir standing off the ground of two Welsh players. Pulisic brings it down. Yes, goal to the United States. The third captain to score. In the fourth World Cup game, Christian Pulisic scores the first American goal since July 1st, 2014, courtesy of Julian Wesley Green in their defeat to Belgium in the last 16. Daniel James scouring for his options as Aaron Ramsey links up with Bale and Moore gives it back to the Welsh captain. Stood his ground, did Stefan. Just over 15 minutes remaining for Wales to find the World Cup equaliser. And Gareth Bale has it splayed wide by Stefan once again. Here's Christian Pulisic crossed into Wire. Nothing here. Thomas crossed into Roberts. This pokes away out of desperation. Now Pulisic is swarmed. It's Joe Allen. Bale. It's wide once again from the Welsh captain. No World Cup goal for Wales' best player in their history. The United States return with a 1-0 victory over Wales. As we peer over the beautiful panorama of La Salle, it's all too fitting that the iconic stadium accommodates the iconic Lionel Messi for the first time 
in this World Cup, but perhaps the last World Cup in his lifetime. The only trophy that eludes the greatest of our generation. Will he return to this hallowed turf in three weeks time to lift that gold trophy above his tiny head? Brought down from the air from Messi, Al Sahafi has failed to intercept and Martinez has failed to collect. I don't think he was expecting to remain on side. Martinez survives the test of strength against Atayev and now Messi returns it to the Inter Milan striker who strikes the whiter upright. Now is it a credit to Saudi Arabia to survive this long against Argentina without conceding? Or is it a criticism of the Arba Celeste to fail to find a comfortable lead against opposition they should be beating? Rodrigo De Paul joined on the outside by Marcos Acuna. Nicolas Gonzalez with a fast, sharp cross that's caught nicely by Ezequiel Palacios. Argentina have taken 50 minutes to score one goal against the underdog Saudi Arabia. The South American champions have finally found their first World Cup goal of 2022. A handful of blue and white shirts lining up for this. Martinez selflessly ducks out of the way so Palacios can do a better service. Gonzalez got Rodrigo de Paul with a good pass and is well controlled from the keeper. That's a spillage that can end in disaster. Nice pass from Paredes. Tears that green defense in half like a leaf. And Martinez pounds the ground in exchange for a penalty kick for Argentina. Step forward, the living legend, Lionel Messi, gets his World Cup goal. And that puts him level with Cristiano Ronaldo for seven World Cup goals each in history. Fairly respectable defeat for the Green Falcons. It's Argentina 2, Saudi Arabia 0. While it's maybe the end of a World Cup era for Messi and Ronaldo here in 2022, it's fair to predict a World Cup swan song for Robert Lewandowski, one of the most legendary strikers in the history of football, yet to score even a single goal in a World Cup Finals. Josviak losing his balance against Hector Herrera, who immediately releases Lozano. And now Raul Jimenez is all on his own. As if there was ever any doubt from the Wolf from Wolverhampton, Raul Jimenez, the man with a soft head, with a cold hard finish. It's the second fastest goal of this year's World Cup. Only surpassed by Harry Kane's opener against Iran by a minute. Mexico, one of the most football crazy countries on the face of the earth, yet to win a World Cup, is off to a perfect start. Lewandowski has mugged Jimenez. Now the captain has found Josviak. And that's a wonderful blind pass to Frankowski. They've doubled Mexico's goal time. With Lemislav Frankowski rips open the Mexican wall with a counter-attack of death. One goal each, we played just barely over 10 minutes. Poland have pumped in a response and that goal should take their people's minds off of the horrors of the real world for just a few minutes. Okay, Zoria has to retreat back to Frankowski. Linetti. Tackled by Arjal. Has a second stab. Oh, watch Herrera. Sanchez was. Hector Herrera crosses in. What a save! Literally the palm of God from Wojciech Szczesny.
Pereira. Down the line to Sanchez. Blocked early by Bednarich. Oh, a dipping strike. Ray shows me squeeze his cheeks a little. Well, Quadrado is blocked and it could easily turn the tables on Mexico as Jozwiak is coming forward for Poland. Avoids going down to the ground. He was entitled to do so, but stood so he can release that strike on Ochoa. Jimenez receives the give and go. It's back to Alainez. Who spooled it off target. There was the chance to win the game for the Mexicans. Pedrado ignores the most important object on the pitch that bounces past him nonchalantly. And now Milic may have a chance to punish him. Oh, it's a terrible, terrible failure. Well, Matty Cash. Aston Villa Wells went in. It's a second chance. Oh, and Milic redeems himself. Poland have surely done it. It will be the first time Poland have won their opening World Cup game since 1974. And of course, where would they finish in that tournament? Third place. It's as good of an omen as any. The Red Eagles have come back from a goal down. Early goals, late goals, Mexico won. Poland to Group D stands for two things. One, defense. The defense of the World Cup can officially begin as the champions France open up their tournament. And Group D also stands for Deja Vu. With the exception of Tunisia, this group is almost identical to the one in France's last World Cup. And the opening game in that group in 2018? Of course, it was France and Australia. Mbappe with a short cross to Benzema. Mr. Ballon d'Or. It's almost insane to think this is only Karim Benzema's second ever World Cup and he scored two goals in his first ever World Cup match back in 2014 eight years later he returns and it's a goal for him in less than seven minutes Luongo headbutts it down into the feet of Mondi it's cleared off of the line Rabio stamps Rogic out before any more Australian excitement can take place. Dembele sandwiched between two, maybe three yellow shirts. Benzema has his preemptive volley clawed away by Ryan. Rogic got carried away, wasted valuable possession in the French box. Long guy. Can't get further than Rabio. And the Moy on the volley. Perhaps making a dent in the beautiful roof of the stadium. Well, Benzema's kept this one going and the dipping strike is controlled and tamed well by Ryan. Mabel. Rogic back heels it through the tunnel of Chiuamani's legs. That could have been very humbling for the Real Madrid midfielder. Fortunately, the captain Lloris has his back. Ten minutes to go until half-time. Here's Guendouzi. Mbappe. Feels Rogic with regret. And then Mbappe! Kid Killian was a young boy, the youngest French player to score in the World Cup. The second teenager to score in a final alongside Pele. Well, the kid is a man this year. And man, oh man, what a goal. It's the feint here that throws Rogic off his game. And it's an almost identical goal to the one scored against Croatia in Moscow four years ago. Germany, Mbappe, Benzema looking for a brace but it's denied by Ryan. Dembele blistering forward for the Blues. Benzema unmanned in the centre. It's another good save from Ryan. France should have more goals by now if not for the Australian captain. Dembele, Robona, goal, Benzema. The world champions are teaching Australia a lesson in world class in Education City. 
I've just got a feeling this World Cup is going to be one with no shortage of excellent goals. And there is one of them. Pasham Luongo has exceeded Rabiot. Rojic to Boyle. And the Socceroos aren't totally out. They still have a little bit of bounce. Martin Boyle will take this honour of scoring against the world champions in a World Cup match. Australia have a second lease of life. It's Taggart on the turn. And it's tackled well by Luis. Going to be a reckless free kick for Australia to concede. An opportunity for France to put the game to bed. Oh, and just as it was. In 2018, an own goal scored by Australia to the benefit of France. Well, the results won't be so roundly taught this time. But history does strike twice. Now, is this a shameful defeat? Or is there no shame in losing to the world champions in such a manner? France 4, Australia 1. Perhaps Group D stands for determination. Something, something Denmark lived by one year ago at Euro 2020. Cruelly denied a place in a final against Italy in a fairy tale tournament that began with tragedy. Has come full circle as Christian Eriksen has returned to the Danish fold. Freeberg. Skov on the volley. Stunning stay from Mustafa. Had to be, he was nearly caught out by a wonder goal. Shakiri beats Hoiberg to the punch. Now here's Kazri trying to find room. And it's stopped by Schmeichel. Good save. Hoiberg tips it forward to Dolberg. And there's the first goal for Denmark. It's taken 30 minutes. Kasper, the friendly ghost, actually possesses a scary precision for goal and thanks to Doiberg we have another pun to make using the initials of his surname and the letter of the group Kars reads Maksani that's a good one too played directly into the lap of Schmeichel and Vass with a beautiful pass to Skov tries to get around Braun well, he's moved the goal slightly, just for the wrong reasons. Mishbury. Kazri. Back to Mishbury. Now, Maksani has booted that one into the desert. Dumsgaard looks up, spotting Dahlberg. Very nearly an inconvenient own goal for Tunisia. Required a good save for Mustafa. That could have been a Peter Shilton impression. Boyberg defeats Brandt. Maneuvers around Mishbury for a cross to Skov. It's a dream World Cup scissor kick from Robert Skov. And with Denmark going two goals up, they take a likely three points into a showdown with France in Doha. Well, for all the talk of Denmark not wanting to be visible at this World Cup, well, that's backfired. That's a goal you can't stop watching. Now Tunisia needs something. Every goal does count in the group stage. And Kayui has hit the post. Oh, it's a cruel denial of a consolation for the North Africans. Shafri slivers a pass through to Krasri. It's a calamitous crash of the crossbar. The two group leaders will fight for the top spot in the next game. For now, it's Denmark 2, Tunisia 0. One rule of the World Cup is that every tournament there must be a group of death. And this year, Spain and Costa Rica share that unfortunate honour with Germany and Japan. And in 2014, the year that Spain, the world champions, experienced the curse, Costa Rica enjoyed the blessing. 
Aguilar picks out Ortiz amongst the chaos. Roby nearly glances it in. As a result, a shock opener that could have been for the 2014 underdogs, Costa Rica. Thiago releases and runs. And Torres returns it. And Mr. Alcantara slam dunks it. Thiago gives Spain a very premature lead against Costa Rica in Doha. It started with Busquets, the only survivor from Spain's 2010 World Cup winning campaign. The Tiki Taka days are long gone. Luis Henrique certainly be looking to Vincente Del Bosch for inspiration. Here is Asensio. Oh, and that one loops like a rainbow, almost catching his former Madrid clubmate off guard. Salso Borges clips the wall on the way through. Corner from Aguilar. There's Campbell. It's the wrong side of the roof of the net. Thiago surveying the lay of the land. Asensio decides to go for glory. None to be found. Morata lays it off to Asensio. Once again, can't beat Kayla Navas. He has his number. And the long ball amounts to nothing. It's intercepted by Carvajal. Now Borges to Aguilar. Here's Campbell. Of the same old fawn in the side of this new look Spain. 2018 was seemingly too much to live up to for Costa Rica after their heroics of 2014. There may be life in the old underdog yet. Carvajal climbs up the pitch, whips in across to Morata. It's an astounding miss. All he had to do was stick his neck out and it somehow missed the target completely. Ortiz on the turn. And Busquets loses control, it's Joel Campbell. Arsenal fans, no doubt, haven't forgotten about him, but he stayed down, clutching the knee. Whipped in by Thiago. And Campbell picks up. Busquets can't figure out a way to dispossess. It may be a Costa Rican counter on the cards. And look at this, it's Calvo who's free. And in the center, Ortiz has only one shot to make. And he splits the apple. Above the head of Unai Simon. The magician has done it. Jose Guillermo Ortiz may have sprung a horrible surprise on Spain. The game has turned on its head. Spain living by the early goal. Well, they were running out of capital. It's almost a metaphor for the World Cup that they both shared in 2014. Thiago, last roll of the dice, couldn't find Moreno. Pedri shot the flex into the path of Thiago. And a relieving save from Navas as the whistle blows. The first major upset of the World Cup, perpetrated by Costa Rica. Germany's last World Cup ended against Asian opposition. Their next World Cup begins against Asian opposition. Both South Korea and Japan were heroic in their World Cup exits. Like Spain, Germany have experienced the taste of the champion's curse. Without the burden of title holders, can Germany bounce back from that 2018 humiliation? Zane was outmatched by Tommy Asu. And Gnabry <laughs> going for something ambitious. Talk about your worst Zlatan impression. Gnabry knocked on to Muller. And Zane! It's a mind-boggling miss. Beggar's belief. Minamino being swarmed by Rüdiger and Kimmich. Giving Manuel Neuer something to do in what's probably going to be his last World Cup. It's Akira couldn't get enough on that clearance. It's a shame for him because Leroy Zane benefited greatly from the miscalculated header. Germany are in front with just a few minutes until the recess. Talk about popping up in the right place at the right time as the Bavarians seemingly combine. 
Thomas Müller's presence just as good as an assist in of itself. Peter. Kamada. Now Tanaka. And a shimmy pass. Kimmich now in the mean night. It's a lame left footed strike. Muller with a give and go to Royce, and that is. Gives and goes to Royce. It's a free pass. It can't ask any more of from the Dortmund veteran. Church Gnabry should be scoring from there. No doubt about it. The round doubt to Thomas Muller. Interprets his space to find Goysens. And that will sting the palms of Schmidt. Kubo stands his ground to get the cross in. It's Minamino. Has been fouled in the box and it's a penalty. Drama coming Germany's way and it's not of the good kind. Japan have been largely ineffective in this game, struggling to get out of their half. And they may have a lifeline at the very end. Minamino versus Neuer. Minamino scores, he holds his nerve. Minamino, the mediocrity at Liverpool, they say. Becoming meaningful at Monaco. But he could be gigantic for Japan at this World Cup. Critics are watching. We're in the depth of extra time. One last chance for Germany. Rudiger, oh, he cruelly hits the post. That was the chance to snatch the victory back from the claws of the Japanese. A dramatic final three minutes indeed. Japan has a lifeline in the group of death. It's Germany 1, Japan 1. Four years ago, Belgium accomplished their World Cup high. They finished third place in that tournament, falling short to France in a tense semi-final. Canada, much like Wales, are returning to the World Cup after only one appearance, and that was in 1986. No stronger impression can be made before hosting their own World Cup in four years' time than beating Belgium here. Hazard, that's a sly creative first touch, hits the post, and unbelievably, he rattles the crossbar. How does Eden Hazard hits both halves of the goal frame in the same attack? Mysterious. Rosario is marching forward for Canada. He spots Jonathan David. Wotherspoon waiting in the middle. And of course, he would hit the crossbar in Canada's first attempt, just like Belgium did just a moment ago. David. Lauren creeps up on Danea and unfortunately didn't make any use of it. I just said, Esther Kaya, David, Lauren, back to Jonathan David. Canada really wasting these opportunities here. Lukaku, and now it's three on four for Belgium. Lukaku has slid a note under the door for Aiden Hazard. He opens it up. It reads, congratulations. Goal to Aiden Hazard. Belgium are in front of the Canadians in this all red cauldron in Alcor. Such a slick finish from Aiden Hazard. And Donker wins the ball of Misets play. And Hazard pays out on Telemann's pinpoint pass. With a hazardous hit. 2-0 to Belgium. The Red Devils really running riots now. It's not dissimilar to Harry Kane's opener against Iran. Only better. The ball travelled through the sky like it was on a cable. And Hazard swung at it like a bullet with a tennis racket. Trossard into Hazard. Back to Trossard. Larrea is desperately trying to keep up Lukaku. Was offside, not that it excuses the miss. The fleet feet of Hazard. Tielemans is breaking away down the centre. Ignores Lukaku. Tries to take the credit for himself. Arfield to Miller. 
Gives it to Denea and he practically gives it back. Did he feel sorry for the Canadians perhaps? Osorio goes for it by himself and it pays off. He has a goal and he kips up to his feet like the rock. No selling the late tackle, no time to. There's only a minute left on the clock for Canada to spoil Belgium's day. A couple of Canadians emerging just shy of the six yard box but there was no need for them. And it's perhaps a warning sign of Belgium. For as flawless as their attack is, their defence has vulnerabilities that could be exploited. In this World Cup Odyssey is Belgium 2, Canada 1. What's better than Belgium finishing third? Well, it's Croatia coming second. They must build on the foundations laid against the Moroccan side who are competing in only their second World Cup of the century. Their return to the world stage four years ago saw them finish bottom of that group. Osic gets the jump on Aguad. He really was clutching at straws with that attempt. Great. And Niziri. Messina across the face of goal to Niziri. The Seville striker put enough pressure on Leverkovic forcing him to desperately bat it away from the impending path of the poacher. Switch up the play, wonderfully to Harit. Massina, enough space for a cross to come in. And it's Enizir, emerging at the far post. He's caught Leverkovic out. He has buried his header as far into the Croatian goal as it will go. Morocco take the go ahead against the World Cup runners-up. Hakimi, it's too early for Eniziri, and he gets a second chance. Smash against the elbow of Leverkovic. Perisic, Kramaric, Orsic, here's a chance. It was a preemptive dive from Bono. He literally risks his limb to intercept this. And Amrabat was far from helpful. Nonetheless, Morocco has survived, they've improvised, and the other Amrabat has wasted it. Here's the young playmaker, Lovre Maia. It's a lovely free pass, but it's squandered by Kramaric. It's a hell of a start for the underdogs Morocco, 1-0 over the World Cup runners-up for previous Morocco, 1, Croatia, 0. Brazilian football at the World Cup in recent years has been far from the samba spectacle we all came to know and love over the decades. Well, the experts say this may be the most talented collection of Brazilian players since 2002, the last time they won the World Cup. Brazil make us fall in love with Brazil again. Chipped up from Sandro, knocked down from Neymar. Blown away by Vinicius. It's got to be the fastest goal of the World Cup so far. And these two young men are projected to be a very dangerous duo here in Qatar. Champions League winner Vinicius looping it into the net as if he was catapulting it from a spoon. A fusion of juniors, Neymar and Vinicius. Kostic, Lilic, Mavlahovic is circled by iconic yellow shirts and can only muster a soft strike. Neymar is put through. Dimitrovic able to do something about that one this time. It's a Serbian cross and Lilic just takes it too high. Danilo waiting for approval, has to go backwards to Antony, let it fly! Nemanja Matic has spotted the run of Vlahovic and surely a knockback across the goal is in order and he can't make it. Fabinho with the lofted through pass and Antony wastes no time 
and getting out into the danger area. And Gabriel Jesus applies his expertise. It's taken Brazil three minutes in both halves to find Bennett. And this is a cross going behind Gabriel Jesus. He does really well to get his head underneath this and guide it back to where it needs to go. Milenkovic spots the run of Milenkovic. Savic rolls it across the face of goal. Vlahovic shrinks the deficit by one goal. Game is back on. Dusan Vlahovic positioned to be Serbia's next greatest export. He gets his World Cup moment. Could have come under better circumstances, but there's still plenty of time to go against the Samba favourites. Paqueta. Nagomaris keeps hold of it and he lets it fly into Dimitrovic's gloves. It's a comfortable save. Can Brazil send the crowd home happy on the encore? And Neymar's gone down. And there may well be one more ripple of the net to come. Courtesy of the Seleschal. Neymar has gone down in the penalty area. And in fairness to him, it's far from theatrical than what we're used to. Neymar makes himself another superstar to find the net on match day one in this World Cup. Well, it wasn't the most flamboyant opening for Brazil, but nonetheless, a solid performance as Brazil 3, Serbia 1. After upsetting the world champions France, and taking Spain to the wire one year ago at Euro 2020. Switzerland are hoping to outgrow that reputation of a team making up the numbers as they take on Cameroon. Samueletto's totally non-biased selection to win the tournament. And the cross deflects conveniently to Sal, deflected for a corner to Switzerland. Cameroon's first corner of the game. Oh, it spells disaster for Switzerland. It's an own goal, a bizarre concession of Mbabu. The Lions will reap the rewards of that one. It's a complete fluke of an own goal. It's come off two players, off the shoulder of Shah, and then one more time off the shoulder of Kevin Mbabu. Berovic keen to be the provider. The Switzerland is Froehler. Tried to poke it with the old nose past Anana. Froehler once again cuts inside and this time it's Seferovic who takes it first time and it well wins past the post. Mbolo is out muscled. He stood his ground and freed the ball to Granit Xhaka who's having the time of his life with Arsenal at club level. Can he transcend it? to the international stage. Very close to doing so. Nkudu to Anana. Oh, it's off the post. Gabriel Sal to stand over the free kick for Switzerland. Can he bring them back in the game? It's a controlled stop from Anana. Abu Bakar from Augusta. And now Abu Bakar shut down by Somner. Promoting and Kudo just trying to get some space from Abeldi. He gets a small cross in. It's clipped and stopped by Sommer. Cameroon take the nervy routes. They hang on for dear life to an own goal from Switzerland. Well, the Cristiano embargo has been lifted and the way the world has been talking this week we wouldn't have thought we were having a World Cup a record-breaking fifth and final World Cup for the living legend Cristiano Ronaldo almost certainly his last but even then he said the same thing four years ago Diaz has found Rafael Leal just one more push forward to Bruno Fernandes and Portugal fly into the lead the vice captain of Manchester United and likely to be the future skipper of Portugal 
when Cristiano's climax finally comes. The Seychelles sear a burning hole in the Ghanaian net. Business as usual for Portugal. Fernandez has found Renato Sanchez. And Cristiano Ronaldo was just one body away from clinching goal number eight. Fernandez once again. It's a closer, harder hit, and it's a good save. We don't talk about Bruno. Oh, we damn well do here in this tournament. The prominence of this playmaker is undeniable. Ronaldo is breaking away from Amerti. Now, was he held back before a four reclaimed the ball? The truth is, the pace just isn't what it used to be for Cristiano Ronaldo. Corner kick to Portugal. Well then, and it's Pereira! Leapt about 10 feet in the air above Dijku. And once that happens, you may as well put your arms behind your head and relax and let the tide take you out to a certain doom. Planted in the furthest never regions of the Ghanaian net. Andre Ayi. Now Akasa! Triggers a fine reaction from Patricio. Casa, now kudos, Pencil, wastes no time getting a cross in and Inaki Williams couldn't correct the course of the cross. Guerrero gets it back from Neves, now Leao is on his way, here's Guerrero, bends one in to the captain, Ronaldo has slotted it and what he lacks in speed he makes up for. In technique and razor sharp reactions nowadays. But more importantly, the world will still talk about him. And this time it's for the right reason. He is on the World Cup record goal scoring sheet as eight goals in five tournaments. And we're just getting started here. Well, the Adams gave it away. And Liao is juggling it on the shoulder. Rafael Liao can make it four. And he's just too nice in trying to pass it past the keeper. Two minutes left. Is there time for one more? A famous fourth for Portugal. And there may well be. Jao Felix has gone down. Let's take a look at this replay. Was he tripped or stamped or punched or kicked? Let's take a look. It's an innocuous trip from Amerti. Ronaldo has gone from CR7 to number nine in the World Cup. Total goals. It's number two of 2022. Portugal pulverized Ghana. It's Portugal four. Black Stars nil. Twenty years ago, South Korea did the unthinkable and reached the World Cup semi-final on their own soil. All of this time later, they are back on their own continent. This time, they face an all-star Uruguayan side who are two-time world champions themselves, although that was an even longer time ago. Go on, son. On target, on goal. The sun will indeed shine in Al Ryan. South Koreans were holding their breath at the news of Sun's injury. And now they can exhale. He's here, he's delivering. Exquisite free kick. Accompanied by a little dance from the infectiously happy man. So Lee Kang in. Pinned it wide. Well, Araceta links up with Darwin Nunez. Suarez, first time, it's a good stop, low and hard. An excellent reflex is shown by the goalkeeper. Valverde couldn't match Sun's energy on the free kick. Lee Kang in, now here is Sun, he beat Araceta to it. Sun, Sun goes for it, and yes, he's done it, he's got the brace. 
Minus the face mask, he is the phantom of the World Cup Opera. Son Hin Myung is making Uruguay cry. Bentanka, here's Darwin Nunez, Jimenez to Suarez. It's a cat like reflex save, but it's not enough. Not fast enough for Darwin Nunez, who pounces to pull a goal back before the break. Liverpool's newfound hitman finding it really hard to miss anything at the moment. And just as he was running out of turf, he finds enough room for a reply. De La Cruz has belted in across, and Luis Suarez, the legend, has nodded in a Uruguayan equaliser. What a game we have on our hands in Education City. De La Cruz with his trailblazing pace is really causing some grief for the Koreans. And now Rodriguez has a chance to turn it around. And he chokes in front of goal. Nunez yeah. knocked down to Edison Cavani. Another Uruguayan icon. Son. He's been everywhere on the field in pink tonight. And Huang Chi Chak has a third goal for South Korea stolen away from it. Could be a counter attack of death for the, for the Tigers. Here is Son! Group H is all about Hyung Min. Son Hyung Min. A World Cup hat trick that puts him in the echoes alongside. Valencia and Harry Kane. Can you ask for a more dramatic climax than match day one? Sun takes the ball home with him. Hopefully, he'll bring it back in time for Qatar's showdown with Senegal. It's Uruguay 2, Korea 3. Are as close as they are far. Everyone in Group A shares a point. Bedfellows England and USA, top of Group B. Messi and Lewandowski are top of Group C. It's the start of the end of the Champions Curse for France. It's like it's 2014 all over again. Costa Rica, top of Group E. The Red Devils are top of the All Red Group. Group G marches to the Samba Beat of Brazil. And the group of heroes are topped by Ronaldo and Sons, Portugal and Korea. It's a hat trick of hat tricks. Harry Kane in the Valencia and Song Hyung Moon are rewarded with a threesome of gold on match day one. Meanwhile, Cristiano Ronaldo and Karim Benzema, the former Real teammates, have two goals apiece. And finally, the multiverse of World Cup madness is underway. Is your country competing? If so, let me know. And don't be shy about your nominations for the best goal, best player and best game of match day one. Have a happy World Cup and thank you for watching.